Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Picture so perfect we play Hello wonderful people, welcome back again to Anointed Lady TV The home of news and politics And we drop news every day And we also react to every videos that comes our way if it is your first time in this channel you are highly welcome thank you so much for stopping by and if you are returning subscribers we appreciate you for your massive support and we say may god richly bless you all for supporting this channel and if you haven't subscribed please kindly smash on the subscribe button put on the bell so you get to know anytime we drop a new video i have a video to present to you this very moment and i will be watching that video with you and after watching let's drop our opinion constructively at the comment section like our videos and also share our videos if possible bye for now well i came to see the president basically to Thank him and um, appreciate uh, his visit to Imo State. You recall he was uh, in Imo State on official visit where he commissioned some strategic projects built by my administration and also used that opportunity to uh, have a town hall meeting with critical stakeholders and leaders of the Southeast. And um, that for me, was very, a very huge uh, success. So I have to come to show appreciation and to thank Mr. President. Basically, that is the main purpose of my coming and took that opportunity also to brief him on the security situation in Imo State and remarkable successes we've recorded within the short period uh, after his visit. Well, in Izumbe, the crisis that uh, ensued five, six days ago, where some bandits and some soldiers uh, had misunderstanding and engaged themselves that led to the death of two soldiers and also some of the bandits. Prominent among the bandits was one of the key prisoners that escaped from a very correctional facility. And that led to a reprisal attack and um, houses were burnt. Uh, only yesterday I had a town hall meeting with the entire community. I met with the leaders uh, in the palace of the traditional ruler and the town hall meeting with critical stakeholders from the area. And we have agreed to embrace peace. And going forward, I have constituted a committee to look look into the matter, come up with uh, recommendations as to how we can support the community with some palliative measures. Uh, as at this morning, we sent relief materials to homes that were displaced as a result of that incident. The situation is under control now, and uh, to the glory of God, uh, I don't think that there will be a repeat of such incident again in Izombe. As for the sit at home order, is people not playing politics with sit at home order? The opposition parties goes to wherever they see people gather. They say, government, government, 20 people have been killed, 30 people have been killed. 
and people start running up and down. That's good. And you get to the scene, you won't see anybody. Recall at the beginning of this incident, I told you people in this hall that the issue of IPOP has been politicized. And I recall so many questions from you people, which I took time to explain. The seat at home order is also being politicized. Because those who issuing the order are faceless. Those issuing the seat at home order are faceless. We've not seen anybody, either through a broadcast or through a publication in any newspaper, directing people to sit at home. Rather, what we know that is happening is this paparazzi mentality of trying to put fear into our people and make innocent people vulnerable. As I speak to you, the sit at home order is not being obeyed in any more states. Apart from the incident of Zombe that restricted traffic in you know, the last Monday, before that time, the previous Mondays, people were going about their businesses in Naimo State. So I think that we need to support the uninformed so that they don't, out of fear, commit suicide. So the truth of the matter is that we had these security challenges, we had mis uh, dis uh, misunderstandings and disagreements, but we've been able to also do a lot to bring this thing to the barest minimum. So the security situation in Imo State is re relatively okay. And people are going about their businesses. The only regret is that we have invested a lot of money trying to manage the insecurity, which of course was not expected. So I think that uh, our people need help. What is the help? We need to sensitize our people. We need to inform our people. There is no doubt that over 1,800 and something people escaped from the correctional facility in Oweri. These were people that were jailed for one crime or the other, ranging from kidnapping, armed robbery, uh, and other criminal activities. So they are still on the street committing similar crimes for which they were jailed. And we're also struggling, doing our best, looking for them. Out of 1,846 uh, inmates, we've been able to uh, rearrest over 870. So we're still counting. Uh, but we need to be encouraged. We need also to be supported. And by the grace of God, I'm sure that nobody wants to die. I've taken a census of the number of people that were killed during this period, 75 to 80% are Igbos. So if it is about the political agitation, why will you kill your brother to get independence? If you get independence, who will you rule? So it makes no sense. People coming out on the street and killing their relatives under the guise of, uh, I want Biafra or I want that. I said in many fora, that 50 something years ago, Odmei Gojuku wanted Biafra through confrontation to federal government. And he was not able to achieve it with the amount of money available to him arising from the father's wealth and other way meaning evil people. 50 something years after, how do you think that that thing that could, didn't work will not work in a digital age? So it doesn't make sense to any reasonable mind and should not be supported by any reasonable mind. Well, I'll speak for myself. I'm not going to join issues with uh, Governor Willie Obiano and what he told you, but all I know that I'm the chairman of Anambra Gubernatorial Campaign Council. And I'm working and doing my best to ensure that APC wins that election. You will recall that uh, after the visit of Mr. President and his engagement with leaders from Southeast, a lot of things were exposed. The interventions of federal government in the Southeast, the progress report of the second Niger Bridge, 
the progress report of Potakot to Enugu Road, the progress report of Wanesha to Enugu Road, the progress report of Were to Aba Road. The, these projects are currently within various completion stages ranging from 80% to 90%, which means that the budgetary provisions are being cash packed. Very good intention of federal government. I don't want to believe that it's true lamentation or condemning a man who is in office that somebody will use to take over from him. So the people of Anambra State who were also in that gathering have discovered the genuineness of the president and his policies vis-a-vis -vis as he concerns the Igbos and have seen that it is only through national politics which all, some of us have been serious advocates of, that the Southeast will rapidly develop. Therefore, our people are now willing to join the winning team. And the winning team is APC, the party. As at the last count, eight members of the House of Representatives, it's not only APGA, PDP, APGA, they have joined the APC. Only this afternoon, the deputy governor of Anambra State joined the APC and has been presented to Mr. President. So what is remaining? If you, there is any strong parameter for conducting an opinion poll, this exodus of list letters and the second in command in the state joining this party, of course, automatically should translate into electoral victory. That means that APC is working. So I don't want to lament. In political program, you can lobby people. And I don't think APC has money to start buying people or giving people money. All we did was try to convince our people through persuasion and counseling. And they are now joining the party. By the grace of God, the way we are going, I wouldn't be surprised if everybody in Anambra declares for APC before the election, including the governor. So please help join us, help me to thank the Almighty God who made this possible. <laughs> yes. The management of crime can be likened to a relationship between a husband and a wife. It's not everything they do to keep peace in the family that are discussed at the sitting room. Most times discussions in the bedroom produces better result than the one in the living room. Take it, I think I've spoken. <laughs> well, if the governor wants to come and collect money, he should come, we will give to him. <laughs>